most middle schoolers are going to be asked to do. Um, so moving forward next year, uh, we're going to keep a couple of these carts in the middle school because there will be times when teachers want to do things that only a Windows machine can do. Um, robotics, probeware, if they're doing, it's mainly science and, and computing type activities that are, that are science or math specific, but we need to have those around. It's kind of like you want a pickup truck. You don't always need a pickup truck, but when you need a pickup truck, you need a pickup truck. Uh, we're in the same boat with the Chromebooks. You don't always need a PC, but when you need a PC, you need a PC. Um, and then our eighth graders are going to be asked, as an extension of the current one-to-one -one program that goes through 9 through 12, we're going to ask our eighth graders to purchase a PC or a Mac. And we are asking our fifth through seventh graders, so students who will be in fifth, sixth, or seventh grade next year, to purchase a Chromebook. Um, that's, and you should have received via US Mail at this point information about what a Chromebook is, what the ask is as far as the device, and so on. Wanted to share with you just a short film. If you don't know what a Chromebook is, I'll talk more about it in a second, but this is uh, sort of Google's overview of what a Chromebook is, and I'm hoping it's audible. gist of a Chromebook for you, I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, a Chromebook runs a very minimal operating system that doesn't actually allow it to get malware. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come by and type in a password so that they will log into the network. They, you all are, I'm sure, have heard about cloud computing. Um, the idea that you don't need to keep everything always on the hard drive of the computer that we own. How many of you use something um, like iTunes or Spotify um, or you store your photos uh, remotely? That's that's the essence of cloud computing. Is and these devices are built to. Um, to use the cloud and to use Google's productivity apps. Let me get to that. Just uh, by way of introduction, that white window that popped up and you may see in just a second is uh, our filtering software that we use for students here on campus. And I apologize, I really didn't introduce Buck. Buck's last name is Cooper, and Buck taught the fifth grade science that he mentioned. Buck's also a St. Andrews graduate, so he knows the whole journey, and uh, he has significant talents. And so we were able this past year to move him into the role of middle school integrationist, technology integrationist. And uh, he serves also with me, you'll see his name quite often. We, he coordinates our director of our activities. And, so as you move into emails next year, we recognize that his email is back as well as mine. Yes. And for those of you who don't formally know, this is Dr. Chris Hart, who is uh, 
Chris, you want to tell them a little bit about what you're doing at St. Andrews? What am I doing at St. Andrews? Living the dream. I <laughs> have gone from our global programs and languages to now thinking more broadly about learning and teaching at the school um, and how we can both pursue and promote educational excellence here at St. Andrews and serve as a resource uh, to the larger community and uh, support educational pursuits and excellence uh, in the, the, with partner schools, with nonprofits, uh, and really across the state of Mississippi as a whole. Exciting. Um, using how we best use technology at what level, um, at what ages, and what capacities. Ask the questions about those things. So, <coughs> Uh, do any of you currently use Google Docs at all? Have you? Yes? Okay. Um, Google Docs is very nice because it has almost all the powers of something like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, uh, but it doesn't require that you buy software. It doesn't require that you download anything to your computer. It can all be done as long as you have an internet connection. And that's the, those are the tools that we've been using in 5th, 6th, and 7th grade over the last two years as far as word processing, spreadsheets, and presentation with our students. It's Google, Google's own productivity applications. What's Again, what's nice about those is you just have to have an internet connected computer to get to them. They're free. They're powerful enough to do good work. Our students write papers in them. They get feedback from teachers uh, in the context of those documents and so on. Um, and the other thing that's nice is you can't ever say, um, my hard drive crashed, or um, I lost my computer, because as long as you can get on the internet on any connected device, you can get to your work that's been done on Google Docs. Um, we chose these Chromebooks in part because of that, uh, because we realized that things may happen to the devices, things, students may drop them, uh, students may step on them, students may leave them at home, but as long as you can get an internet connection, we can get you to a laptop that will allow you to get to the work that you're doing here. And more and more, the tools that people are using to do collaborative work, to do academic work, are based in the cloud. Um, Microsoft recognizes this and realizes that they're not going to continue to make piles and piles of money off of selling you Microsoft Word on a CD or a DVD um, and having you put it on your computer. And so they've launched also Office 365, which is aping what Google has done so well for so long. We also, we, again, we really like this um, because it makes collaboration easy. Um, let me actually ask you to do this real quick. I'm going to create a document in Google Docs. Uh, I'm going to call it a test document. And I'm very quickly going to write something in. My mom used to do this uh, to test the typewriter ribbon at our house when we had this electric. She was a reporter. And she told me that this sentence was actually code to her sister, that her sister needed to send her a carton of cigarettes at college. <laughs> um, could do her sister was in high school at the time. So, uh, that was, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this, and I'm going to share it with MS Chromebooks at GoSaints.org, which some of you are logged in as. I'm going to make it so that you can edit it. Um, now what I'd like for, let's, let's have it happen here. What I'd like for you to do is click on Share With Me on the left-hand side. Um, and there's Test Document, right? So open that. All right, so as soon as he opened that, this appeared on the screen. This means that he and I are both looking at this document right now, and I can see what he's doing in the document. That pink cursor is his presence in that document. So I'm going to move the cursor and type something. You can see in real time the document's being edited collaboratively, which is really nice when you're the teacher of a class asking students to say, do a journal entry in your history class. You can sit at your desk and watch them work in real time as soon as, soon as they've shared the document with you. You can also um, give people feedback on their work while they're doing it. So let's say I don't like this. I can go here, I can comment. 
click comment, and I can say, why don't you say to the assistants of the country? And then that comment appears. That's you know the 2015 equivalent of a red pen on um, something that someone has written. And you can also suggest edits. Um, so let's say I just I think this sentence is atrocious, or I want to suggest a different <laughs> way of writing it. Um, now is the time for all good people to provide meaningful assistance to all nations. Um, and I leave that. So what the student then sees is, I've struck through, I've suggested that they replace it with this. Um, if they go into the document and then click the check mark next to what I've suggested, it makes the change in the document. Uh, so again, it's, it's the 21st century equivalent of the red pen um, on the uh, typed manuscript. Uh, so again, we use this with our students because it enables quick collaboration, it's free, it enables teachers to give feedback electronically. We're sort of Trojan horsing po folks as far as getting away from printing because I can turn in a paper here. It's also time stamped, so there's no, you know, oh, I turned it into you last night. No, it's time and name stamped, so I know, no, you really didn't share it with me. And as soon as I've shared a document with, with someone, or as soon as someone shared a document with me, they don't have to ever share it again. As long as it's shared with me, if there are changes made to it, I see those changes immediately, which is really beautiful. Um, one other feature that we really like in terms of writing instruction in the middle school is um, we can see revision history on documents. So it automatically saves as you're making changes in the document. So if a teacher wants to go back with a student and say, you know, two drafts ago you had this, now you, you've, you made these changes. Or if you have four or five students in a lab group working on a lab report together, working on a spreadsheet, and one of them decides to malevolently erase all of the group's work. Um, and I've had this happen in a science class. They have a lab report, they have three or four pages of a lab report, and um, mischievous fifth grader decides control A, highlight everything, and then delete, and it all deletes and it goes away. And you have three people freaking out and one person laughing under his or her breath. Um, you just go to the revision history and go back to before that change was made, click on it, and then choose, um, that's your new version. That takes you back to previous version. Did I do that properly? You get the point. Um, so it's, it's a nice tool for collaboration and it gets us uh, moving away from paper in the classroom. That is, that's, let me share with you also, there is presentation, well there's spreadsheet software, we can create a spreadsheet. We, we did some of this in fifth grade science. We created spreadsheets for lab data, found measures of central tendency, created scatter plots. And there's also presentation software, which I'm actually using right now as I make this presentation, uh, which is not as fancy as PowerPoint, but it gets the job done. Um, most of what I did as far as PowerPoints in fifth grade science, which I didn't do a lot of PowerPointing, uh, but most of what I did was um, was based on this. Was based on this because I could work at home on my home computer, not have to drag a laptop back and forth, get to work, turn my laptop on, and there it was. Again, as long as you're on an internet-connected device, you can use those tools. Uh, let me get back to this. So, why Chromebooks? Why these specific devices? Um, a big part of it is ease of use. These automatically update when there's new versions of the software very quickly. These don't require us to connect to a Windows domain in the same way that our Windows machine. There are just a lot fewer moving parts, uh, and that means there are a lot fewer things that can go wrong. This is, um, I don't know, this is a motor scooter, this is a Vespa, this is not um, a 1971 Chevrolet C10 short wheelbase pickup truck, right? Um, or this is not the super fancy computer-driven car that is out on the market now. This is a simpler device that we can get our heads around how it works, particularly with 5th, 6th, and 7th graders. I showed you the web-based tools, and increasingly that's where we're headed. As internet connections get faster, as storage gets even cheaper, um, 
people are going to be using web-based tools. And as people realize that they make collaboration instant and easy. Um, it allows, again, cloud storage of student work, which is really nice for, I lost my homework, the dog will not eat the cloud. Um, it's also really nice for if the device is damaged, the work is safe. If the hard drive crashes at home, the work is safe. It's, it's the mechanical thing. It's very highly unlikely that Google's servers are at some point going to all go kaput. And if they do, we have bigger concerns than um, a sixth grader's lab report for science. We're probably having to deal with the apocalypse. So um, there's no malware because there's, it's a small enough operating system no one is trying to figure out how to corrupt and hijack Chromebooks. And your child's not going to be able to download viruses um, by clicking on a pop-up ad. It just won't happen. And then finally, we as a school invested tremendously in improving the wireless infrastructure on both of our campuses over the last year. We've replaced all of our access points with newer access points. We've gone to a fiber connection through C Spire uh, on both campuses. And so with better wireless infrastructure, with newer access points, and with a larger pipe allowing us to both receive and send information via the internet, these devices, which are primarily internet-based devices, make a lot more sense. Um, I think I, I mentioned a few of these things, but right now, with just the Chromebooks that we have, fifth graders, sixth graders, seventh graders are all using them, um, and in some of the, in some cases, they're using them almost daily. I think seventh grade global studies is using them daily, um, and fifth and sixth grade use them quite frequently because there's just this ease of access this year. But we do collaborative research and writing via the web and via the word processing tool I just showed you. We have teachers who are using the feedback tools that I showed you to give students feedback on their writing. I've got students in my sixth grade technology class right now creating interactive maps of our campuses and also the locations of all of our um, partner schools and our exchange programs using Google Maps as a, a larger project which we're working on, which is we're upgrading the school's Wikipedia presence. I wanted to help the sixth grade C, A, a model of how to have a positive footprint on the internet, and B, to see that Wikipedia is actually quite well maintained in a lot of cases, and people are very transparent about why they make changes on those pages. It just democratizes the ability to make those changes. And so we're in the process of interviewing folks. Actually, I can, I can give you a taste of where that project stands right now. So my sixth grade tech class and I are using this thing called, it's not Trello, it's Trello. Uh, it's project management, web-based project management, uh, so, not software, but application. This is what we've got so far. So all of my sixth graders have access to this. What we've done is we've created different categories. They come in on sixth grade tech class, we go to this. Each of these sets of initials is a student, and these are teams of students who have been assigned to do specific tasks. So we've got a group making a North Campus Google Map, we've got a group making a South Campus Google Map, uh, and I think I could probably share the fruits of that labor with you. Um, we've got students interviewing the different heads of school because one of the things we're working on is uh, we want to have a section on the school's Wikipedia page about traditions in all the divisions. Um, and then we've got specific things we want. So a paragraph about our Malone program with a link to the Malone Foundation's webpage and to the school's acknowledgement of it. Um, a section about our global studies program uh, that has links to all of our exchange schools and a Google map of, uh, you know, that shows where our exchange partners are located. Let me see if I can show you real quick. These are my maps. This is my personal account. I'll get rid of this one. The, uh, the North Campus map is actually quite nice. Okay, here's the North Campus map. This was the team of students that created this. So, They've located our campus, I'll go to the Earth view, um, and then on our campus have tagged different locations. Um, that's our observatory, which we're still, this is a work in progress. Um, our practice field, softball field, I think they got the lake, they did Lake Sherwood Wise is correct, the CPA. It's a fun project, and the, our ability to do that collaboration quickly is a product of their ability to use these tools. 
Um, and this is the type of work, and I told them this the other day, this is the type of work that most adults are doing in most modern jobs, right? You're, meeting, you're, you're linking up with people around some shared purpose, uh, and you're producing some product collaboratively, and you're on deadlines, and it involves communicating with other people, which is why I'm happy that we're getting them to interview um, our faculty and administration about things, and then to take that information and to make it in some way meaningful for a global audience. And that's, that's the other thing. We had a, a student sort of behaving inappropriately in class the other day, and I stopped and I said to the entire class, I was like, I don't understand how this isn't fascinating. How, name, a, name, name other opportunities where you have to produce something that as soon as we have produced it, it's going to be visible to anyone in the world. And that's what this Wikipedia project for them is about. Um, other things that we've done this year with the Chromebooks. Uh, we have teachers who use web-based quiz uh, applications or use our own haiku management system to give quizzes or tests, even the 8th grade science exam, a portion of that was done online. We have students who are learning to program uh, using Scratch. We're going to do some of that in 4th quarter and 5th grade science, and it's done some here in the lower school with Tinker. Um, we had students in our 7th grade class for their final first semester project designing 3D printable objects. There was a prompt. It was basically, we've studied a number of issues that are global issues in countries around the world. Choose one of those issues and design a solution. Um, and then prototype that solution. So either build it out of materials you can find around the house or use Tinkercad online and design something and we'll print it in the lab in uh, the middle school with the 3D printer we have. And then, of course, the sort of the base level of using something like this, right, is creating presentations. Everybody, you know, knows how to do a PowerPoint, whether they can do it well or not. Everybody knows how to do it, and so we, we have that happen a lot. Um, for next year, the device that you're actually looking at that's on the table in front of you, and I apologize for pointing, this is the school-recommended Chromebook that we're asking all of our 5th, 6th, and 7th graders to have next year. Um, and we've arranged, if you've gotten the mail from the school, we've arranged with CDWG for you to be able to purchase it through the school. Once it arrives at the school, we'll configure it and then we'll call you and let you know that you can pick up your child's computer. But if you choose not to, if you're free not to purchase the school recommended device, we also send specifications for the device that you should purchase and you should be careful in purchasing to be sure that it is compatible with the school's wireless network. That's been the biggest problem that we've had with, with any of these. Um, so you have the, uh, the opportunity to purchase through the school, if that's convenient for you. You also have the option of going to Best Buy or looking at other places online and finding a device that you think is better. But we would, again, urge you to be sure that the device that you purchase, regardless of whether it's through the school or on your own, is compatible with the specifications that we sent out to you. And if you need that information, if you, you know, haven't gotten it, or if you need another copy of it, or you just want to talk more about it, um, I'll be glad you can email me, or you can email Kevin O'Malley, and we'll be glad to, to talk with you about it and help you, help you move forward with that. But, that Buck, I was just yeah. going to add, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the $345 price is saving you, uh, we calculated about $80. Uh, we're tax exempt. We uh, you won't pay shipping, and we got a small educational discount from from the vendor. So again, it's a it's a, a nice machine. For yeah, me. absolutely. Uh, we have been using these this year in the carts that we bought. These are the devices that we bought for uh, through the annual fund for the cart as well. And these are actually devices that students have been using. So that's why there may be smudges on the screens. They're sturdy little machines. Um, they're not like military grade. You're not going to be able to take it to Afghanistan or Syria and survive what's there. But we think that they're good enough for the rough and tumble life of a St. Andrews Middle Schooler. Um, we also encourage you in what we've sent, you know, purchase one of two things, either um, or both. Definitely a sleeve um, and I would also consider the possibility of a backpack that's built for carrying laptops, which they're fairly common. Um, they're, I have one, I have a, a sort of thing for backpacks and bags and things. So I have a couple of laptop backpacks. They make some that have a larger front space and then a smaller pocket behind that that you zip and slip your laptop into that's completely padded. 
or they make just a backpack that has a very large front space and at the back of that very large front space there's a place to slip a laptop and then it's padded on both sides as well. That's, I think, essential. And we'll be working with our faculty this spring and over the summer about being clear on expectations for our students regarding where it's stored when they're not using it on campus, um, what they should do if they don't have a charge on it or if something goes wrong with it, and also um, when it's appropriate to be using it, sort of how to deal with the norms of the class, because it's a different classroom if folks have devices out than it is if they're simply working on paper or pencil. Um, so that, I think, is that's everything that we have as far as presentation. We'd love to answer your questions at this point. As a practical matter, do y'all recommend a rolling backpack at that age or a we, we do, and that, that's a good point. Uh, we find that there are a couple of subjects that don't, are not using books. Fifth grade science, for instance, does not require books. So I'd say five years ago the rolling backpack was uh, recommended because of the weight of books for all classes. I, I think if, if I was making a purchase, I would probably not go with the rolling backpack, but go with the one that would allow the storage of the, of the uh, Chromebook. So they won't have as many heavy books? You know, in theory, we're, they're decreasing. They are. Um, they will have some, and they use the same book in fifth and sixth grade history, so that's a good bit of news for y'all. Um, There's also Ann Marshall and Meriwether Truckner, the fifth and sixth grade teachers, are, are very interested in the online version of their textbook, which they have, and they want to be clear the students have access to that as well. They're not, we're not in the position of going to all online text at this point, but it's another situation where, uh, where if the child loses the thing and can get internet access, we can get them to it, right? So we're working with closely with those two on, on that. There, it has a number of nice tools that you can use to highlight text and uh, point to things and answer questions. And so um, we're going to support them in trying to head in that direction. That's very but again, we're not going to online text right. at this point. We're just supporting faculty and learning how to manage with online text. Online text is great. If if your child is in two different households and traveling between them and he gets to one and he realizes the book is at the other or if, if you're in two locations or on a trip and so that it has its merits but again we have don't want to send this message out as Buck said about we'll be textbook free that is not our goal. I would say though that I, in the longer term you know I think most people will will and some do now have the capacity to carry their office on their back or on their bike you put me somewhere with a laptop, a phone, and a tablet, and an internet connection, and I can do all that I need to do. Yeah, that's <coughs> really yeah, a hard phone. I mean, it's all, honestly, in terms of things, where it's really working. Really 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 you want a bicycle, you need a pickup truck, are you okay with a Vespa? I mean, we can, we, we, it takes all kinds to do it, but we, we can do it. So, other questions? What about their ability to download games and play them amongst themselves? So, I, again, uh, you can't do Minecraft on a Chromebook. Um, there are games, and you can you can download games as extensions to your browser. I've done it at home. I have Angry Birds in Chrome, and my kid can play it. Um, and there are other. There's it's sort of like the App Store for Apple, except that it's not as fancy because you're not downloading full-on software. You're just downloading basically the ability to to play a game through your browser, which they do anyway. Um, and so then it's, it's incumbent upon us to help them learn sort of good habits for when that's appropriate. And um, the, the, the larger question of parental controls is an interesting one. Uh, you can create an account on a Chromebook that allows you to supervise a user. And so you can make your child a supervised user, which then allows you in real time and later on to see the websites that the user of the supervised user account has been visiting. So you can. You can also block sites. You can set sites to be um, only able to open with your permission. It's not as powerful, say, as the parental controls on a Mac, where you can actually set. I can make it on my Mac at home so that my son Henry can only log on after 9 a.m. and has to, and, and cannot log on after 6 p.m. Um, but this, because it doesn't have that sort of full bore operating system, doesn't have that power. Uh, 
but the supervised user is one option. And the other is when we're at school, it's just it's best practice as a school to have some form of web filtering, and we do have that. And then we also we have the, the living, breathing web filters who are the faculty who are going to make sure that your children are doing meaningful work with these devices once we equip them. really great to have a parent workshop like later next fall about sure. that sort of stuff for sure. those of us who are challenged. Agreed. Sure. Sure. Well, and certainly like, I mean, we all probably have other computers. I mean, I don't think my child's looking up anything that he probably shouldn't at this point, but you know, as they get older and they certainly explore, it would be great to have more info on that just for whatever other computer he might be using. Sure. Um, I like the idea of the six o'clock cutoff, you know, but the game definitely changes in eighth grade when they um, they then are required to purchase the more full fledged laptop. They either get the Windows or the Apple machine, and so one would be for parents of fifth or seventh graders parental controls with the Chromebook. The other would be on down the line with the late middle school, early high school students parental controls with Windows and Mac. And we definitely I think have the people and the knowledge to, to help support. So, we, you know, by you uh, owning a Chromebook, uh, another piece of that will be, that will be their uh, electronic vehicle and then maybe we'll be less likely to use the home computer, which we realize with families of multiple children at St. Andrews, that begins to be a jockey for computer time at night. So this is uh, well intended. We looked at iPads when they first came out, gosh, probably five years ago, and we did a test pilot amongst our faculty and we decided at that point that all the iPads had a lot of advantages, they were not really going to enhance learning. This is why we have waited to find the right fit for us. And Chromebooks are all over the educational front. You just can hardly pull up an, an article that there's not some really uh, significant endorsement of this platform. So that's one of the reasons that we have gone for. Um, your children will use it for three years, uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade year. We fully feel that this uh, device can last that long. Um, and matter of fact, we took uh, magazine money in the middle school. It's not quite as prolific as it is in lower school, but we had enough of our proceeds this year. We've already pre-purchased all of the fifth and sixth grade teachers their own <coughs> Chromebook. We gave them to them in December and started a first training session so that they would have six to eight months experience of adapting to that format, and uh, we'll continue parent education and our teacher education as well. I do have two more questions. Sure. The risk of monopolizing the floor. Uh, one is keyboarding. Um, mm -hmm. Do you recommend free mm -hmm. training still? Mm -hmm. I, I know my older son does not have it. Definitely I encourage you. I, I actually, I think I watched uh, an adult hunting peck yesterday in some appointment context. But that's something that we feel like is not necessarily the best use of the limited time that we have in the middle school as far as technology. Um, and so would encourage you, there are a wide range of free resources on the, on, on the web and would be happy to connect you with some of those. If you send me an email, I'll be glad to send you a list. Um, but would encourage you to, to have that be a part of what your children do during the summer. Some of them are you know, totally gamified last year among the fifth grade. One of the really big ones was called Nitrotype. And NitroType allowed you and a friend to race each other um, while typing in cars. And you could also they could upgrade your car and get new tires. And that was super. But the gist of it was the kids were super hyped up about typing as fast as they could. Um, so as far as keyboarding goes, definitely would be glad to connect you with resources uh, and then encourage you to, to get your children to spend time on this. Absolutely. And then my other question, I know this year you're so you're probably going to be spending a lot of time just covering the basics of how to use technology. But do you have some plans or do you have any programming at the middle school for those kids who are really, really into science and technology for the advanced students? That are this is my nice turn. That's a <laughs> so, uh, we don't like that. Uh, <laughs> Two things. This is on tape. This is perfect. I'm sorry Google for like, the inside laughter. We're in love. We are, we, we, are we, uh, we are in tune with you. <laughs> uh, we, we share the concern. 
The opportunities that exist as of next year will be, um, again, I'm supporting Michelle Schaefer, the fifth grade science teacher, in the use of Scratch for part of fourth quarter, which is a programming environment developed at MIT in the Media Lab, which does amazing work. Um, I've done it with the fifth grade class over the last two years. Um, there are really wonderful curriculum resources and students can do really fascinating and complex work. And it's free and it's cloud-based, um, although you can also download it. It is sort of a mashup of media and storytelling and uh, video games and it, it takes some of the really wonderful things about Logo, which was sort of the original children's programming environment and, and does some great stuff with it that only computers now are able to do. Let me share with you a little bit of what we've got. Unfortunately, I won't have sound, um, but I would like to, let me see, my studios. Okay, um, this is Saint Studio. I am, wow, they've taken down a lot of their work. That's too bad. Let me see if I have, what I have as followers here. Um, we had a number of students last year who got so into it that one of them now does support for other Scratch users. Uh, and I want to share with you something that he did that was really beautiful and um, exciting. New computer elective as well. And School. Yeah, get them yeah, that so, hey, Bob and, doesn't want to tell you. <laughs> and, so, go ahead, do the other sixth, one. Sixth grade has a technology class that's a part of the quarter rotation, which is primarily digital citizenship, and then the Wikipedia project we're working on this year, it gets to morph uh, based on who's in there and sort of what's what's the thing. But definitely that's where we're trying to cover the digital citizenship piece as well. Uh, seventh grade will have an elective course for the entire year that is electronics and programming that I'll be teaching. Um, we're going to spend probably the first half of that year pretty much just in the world of electronics, so wiring, soldering, electronics components, and then in the second half of the year move into learning how to program microcontrollers like the Arduino, and then sort of sort of build things. Um, we invested so that eighth grade, uh, fully a quarter of eighth grade science is working with the Lego robots, the EV3 robots, which are the newer ones. Um, and learning how to program with those, and then also working on challenges. And that feeds nicely into all through middle school. We're still working out the particulars of it. We offer students the afternoon, the extracurricular opportunity of being a part of the robotics teams, um, which that primarily takes up first semester. Um, we have a regional competition, and then if you do well enough at regional with your team, you then go to the state competition. Um, the, other, the, the second half of that, so we've just started this week actually, Makers Group in the middle, which is primarily targeted towards fifth and sixth. I had one show up yesterday and we messed around with Scratch. The topic, that, that's sort of topical, so weekly I'll do something. Next week it's going to be Scratch with something called a Makey Makey. So you connect this thing to anything that conducts electricity, you can control a computer with it, make interactive objects. A week after that, we're going to work with something we invested in this year called Little Bits, which are electronics components, wires, motors, um, branches for wires, all sorts of things, LEDs that connect magnetically rather than requiring the use of a soldering iron. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll mess around with those. But that's those are the after-school opportunities. And then we're also at work in the longer term. We're currently trying to hire someone to be combination math computer science teacher in the upper school. So right now our students cap out in eighth grade with opportunities to do robotics and programming. And our hope is the person that we hire this year will help us to increase our programming offerings in the upper school to get to the more advanced and hopefully eventually have the ability to offer AP computer science um, and whatever is beyond, maybe also, we have this Malone Online School that we offer classes in in the upper school. Malone Online offers an even more advanced computer course that requires a five on AP computer science, but allows you to take it with an instructor who's remote um, and to really, so we, we're building our capacity to go hopefully as far as our students need us to go. Um, 
And the other piece for that person that we're hoping to hire in the upper school is there is another level to the robotics that we do in the middle school, which is First Lego. There is something called First Tech Challenge, which has the same robotic brain, but ramps up the programming to something that requires syntax called Robot C, and ramps up the nuts and bolts of the robot from being plastic Lego pieces to being metal pieces, and ramps up the size of the robot from being roughly this size to being something as large as that. Um, that's the, so that's the longer term vision in terms of robotics and programming in the upper school as well. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming and listening to me drone on this morning. Uh, I'm very excited as we are about what we're doing. There's really good stuff, good work being done across all three divisions, but especially this one. And there, there are happies on the table, so please help yourself. And uh, thanks again. <laughs>